Hey there, we are at New York Comic Con, and I'm with Joshua Williamson, who, of course, is the writer of The Flash and many other fantastic titles. How's it going? I'm doing really good. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's been a crazy con. Are you having a lot of fun? Yeah, man. This has been a really, really great con so far. It's been a lot of, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, I got to talk to Grant Morrison about Flash yesterday, so I feel like that's one of those things that like is these rare occurrences you get to actually do, so it's been, it's been really... Now, of course, we're talking about The Flash, and you are the man who knows just about everything about The Flash. Uh, How has it been writing The Fastest Man Alive? It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because I, you know, I, uh, I it's, 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 it's very surreal. I'll be straight with you, right? Yeah. Like, I have loved The Flash since I was a little kid. He was one of my, you know, my favorite characters. I uh, it was one of my favorite comics. Like, I'm a really big fan of this that Mark and Jeff did, and and, and uh, after I got really into that, I got a little older, I was able to go back and read a lot of the older stuff. I just love that book. And I remember it was, uh, it was 2015. It was like spring of 2015. Snyder came to me. Scott Snyder and was just like, you should write The Flash. And I was like, that'll never happen. That'll never happen. I would love that. It's almost like dream jobs. I'm like, that's never going to happen. But then I was obsessed with it after that. Like, I was just, I, I, I couldn't let it go, you know? And so all, like, for months and weeks, I was just, like, in my brain. I couldn't sleep, dude. I was just like... I gotta write that flashbook. I gotta write that. I, I, I gotta write that flashbook. I, you know, and I uh, I I went and, and was able to pitch it. And and you know, the first time I pitched it, they rejected it. They didn't like the oh. idea. But they gave me some notes, and I went back and I came back. But I think they saw how passionate I was, and how much I really loved the character. Mm -hmm. And so I came back around, and I was just like, I have this idea. This is what I want to do. And I remember pitching it, and they were like, We love it. Let's do it. And I couldn't believe it, dude. I went home. It was here. It was here two years ago. And I, uh, after that meeting, I had to go home. And I got on my, uh, took a taxi and was heading to the airport. And I was just blown away by it. Uh, but I've been able to do it now for two years. And I love it, man. And, and they're going to have to pull it from my cold, dead hands at this point. <laughs> like, I have so many stories I want to tell. And, and right now, I, I feel like everything's a roller coaster ride with that book. And, like, right now, we're kind of in a story. Where we're doing a little bit something smaller and a little more, no pun intended at all, but a little more negative on purpose to kind of put it very in an interesting position so we could do all these bigger stories. But it's like... It's been a lot of fun because I feel like I've spent the last two years, um, I mean, it's a year and a half in publishing, but I've been working on it for the last two years. Right. Yeah. I've been able to set up all these pieces to put things where I need them to tell a lot of really big stories next year that I'm like super pumped about. about. Well, that's really cool. I mean, of course, you've gotten you've gotten to do a lot. I mean, we're what, 32 issues, I think, have come out, 31, 32 or so? You can, and I'm writing in the 40s right now, but I know what happens, man. Like. Like, I can tell you what happens in 50. I can tell you what happens in 51. I can tell you what happens in 56. I can tell you what happens in 60. Like, I know. You've got your you've got your whole trajectory. Well, and it's really cool because I, I think that it's cool to have these alternating bigger arcs and then a shorter arc. I mean, you opened up with the big arc that had the Godspeed arc, which, of course, Godspeed, people took to him like water. People loved that creation. And now, of course, you're introducing more new villains to the colorful gallery of rogues that the Flash is. Not to the rogues, because you've got a different rogue story, but how's it been creating? Uh, it's a lot of fun creating Flash villains. I think that was one of the things, if you go back and you look at what Mark and Jeff would do, they would create all these like crazy little weird villains on the sides. And uh, and some of them, you know, like Paper Cut uh, was a character we created uh, in the second arc. And that's a character who, in issue, was it 14? Yeah, it was 14, Captain Cold like beat the crap out of him, you know? Um, but we're coming back around to a lot of that stuff and, and being able to use those characters in different ways. Um, it's fun, dude. I don't know. It's really fun. But at the same time, I think, and, and I was talking about this with somebody else earlier, I like creating the new villains. I like creating uh, blood work and uh, all the stuff with Black Hole that we're doing. I almost gave something away just now by accident. Um, but one of my favorite things is actually taking some of the older Flash villains and looking at them from new angles. Like you look at some of the stuff I did with Thawne, which all I did was go back and look at what Jeff and uh, Mark had done and kept building on it, you know? Well, I am super excited. I'm sure that everybody watching is super excited because Flash is coming out and it's doing amazing things twice a month. Absolutely love it. And thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Yeah, no problem. Um, it's always good to talk to Flash fans, man. Well, great. And thanks. Hey there. We are here at New York Comic Con and I'm with Peter Tomasi. Hello, everybody. Of course, Peter writes tons of wonderful books for DC Comics, currently writing Super Sons and Superman. And uh, are you having a super time at the con? Uh, having a great time. The uh, attendance here is amazing. It's been packed. The weather's been great. And uh, can't say enough. I've been getting a lot of love at the table. So it's been, uh, it's been a great show. Well, I'm not surprised you're getting a lot of love because you are writing two of the Honestly, I think best received books that have come out since DC Rebirth. You've done so much for Superman. How has it felt to be a part of the Superman team in this very important period for him? 
Um, it's been great. I mean, it's one of the things where, you know, something that Dan DiDio once said was that if, if Superman's running right, the rest of the DCU starts to feel like it's all running right. So, you know, and he and he said that, and it's, it's a really great compliment. And, you know, me and Pat Gleason and Doug Monkey and uh, all the rest of the artists who've been contributing to keep the book aesthetically right up there. There's never feeling like it, we're shorting it. Yeah. Every just thing, it just feels all top-notch talent all the way around. So it, it's been a real great run so far. We took a little bit of a breather recently. Mm -hmm. We'll be back on 33, but uh, it's it's been great. Well, it's been a lot of fun, and you know, you say you took a breather, but you've still been pumping out Super Sons, which has been really fun. I mean, if you had told me a year ago that one of my favorite characters in the DC universe would be John Ken, I would have, I probably would have laughed because I didn't even know who he was, really. Right? Yeah, I got that a lot at you. A lot of people. It's but it's funny at the tables. You really hear. Didn't really know who Jonathan Ken was. I'm so happy, you know, that you've been running with it and making him a great character. And the same thing with Damien. I hate Damien as a character, and now you've made me love him. So yeah, it's been it's been great. People really seem to be connecting with the book, and um, just all ages, you know. And it's we're just we're, we're writing, you know. I'm writing just I'm hoping which are just good stories drawn by Jorge Jimenez, who is amazing. And uh, it's it's been really great. Like I said, I mean, I've been really lucky. I, when you know to be able to write and have great artists around you supporting the work, it's phenomenal. Hey there, we are here at New York Comic Con with John Romita Jr. John, how's it going? It's going very well. Good to see you. It's good to see you too. It's a great con. It's a good experience. I hope you're having some fun. Oh, I'm always having a good time. Yeah, it's great. I love being here. Of course, uh, John, you've got some big projects off on the horizon. You've got The Silencer coming out. Tell us what it's like to be a part of this brand new series. Uh, well, it's always exciting to come up with a new idea. Dan Abnett came up with this great name, and combined with the editors, we've come up with this interesting character. It's daunting to come up with a new character. How do you come up with a new idea in comics? It's like coming up with a new melody in, in the music world. So, we, But we've managed to work this out, that she's a great character, and it's a great premise. And now the visuals got to meet. Now we got Sandra Hope Archer and Dean White to follow me. So we got just three three artists on this. And I don't care if anybody says it, if anybody has seen Sandra's line work, it is up there with the best, if not the best, line work you've ever seen. Yeah. And Dean White, well, Dean and I go way back, and Dean is just he's just unconsciously good. This is going to be a beautiful title. Well, I don't doubt it. Of course, you've done art on a lot of big things lately as well. You also got to be a part of the build-up to uh, Dark Knight's Metal. You got to be a part of Dark Days. How does it feel being part of a team in that kind of sense where you're one of an art team versus with the Silencer where it's your own approach? Are oh, you mean with the other three artists that we're yeah. doing? That was such a strange feeling because I, I didn't know how they were going to handle it. And it's sitting, it's assumed that they were trying to meld everybody into one big goop. They, did, they didn't. They let everybody be their own individual and worked around that aspect of it. So the four of us were entities unto ourselves and just happened to be part of this. I thought they were going to try and smooth it over. Let's try to make the transition ob uh, less obvious. No, they wanted the transition to be obvious and everybody knew it was the four of us. It's a little, again, it's a little bit intimidating having those three guys. Damn, these guys are good. <laughs> well, it, you're definitely in a high caliber of art. It's really some top dot stuff, and Dark, Dark Days, the casting and the forge were really tremendous books that brought to light some old school characters that we hadn't seen in a long time. Are there any characters that lurk in the depths of the DC Universe that you'd like to bring to light? Oh boy. I, all I can think of is that if I had a choice of doing a character, or a group of characters, is the very first book I ever read in the history of the world was a Metal Men book. Really? And I was in a, well, I was telling somebody just, you know, just a, a half hour ago, I was in a barber shop in Queens. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have been more than six years old. And on the floor, there was a Superman comic with the cover ripped off. And then next to it was a Metal Men comic with a cover on it. was Ross Andrew. But I picked it up and I don't think I understood a word of what was going on. But I was reading, literally looking at it and I said, wow. And it didn't occur to me that it was such an important part of my future life until my father was doing a cover after doing romance books for DC all those years. Right. He was working on a superhero book with Daredevil, I think. And I asked him what it was, and he explained to me it's a superhero who also happens to be blind. And then the top of my head blew off. <laughs> oh my God! He's gonna get. He's gonna beat up all these guys, and he's blind too. And I was hooked from that moment on. All within the space of about two weeks. Wow. Metal, Metal Men to a Daredevil cover, and it ended up being that. T that 90 degree turn you make in your life when it changes everything. Hey there, we are at New York Comic Con with Ben Percy. Ben, how's it going? I'm having a blast. It's sensory overload here at 
uh, the con, but uh, good times. Good hanging out with the fans and seeing all of my fellow creators. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. There's so much going on, of course. You've got a lot going on. I mean, we've got Green Arrow and Teen Titans really firing on all cylinders right now. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, just had the novel come out, too, so I'm juggling all of these different things, but having fun doing it. Yeah, it's really cool. So earlier we uh, we talked a bit with uh, Pete Tomasi, who was uh, talking about how there's some cool stuff coming up with uh, Super Sons and the Teen Titans. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, well, we've got a Super Sons, Superman, Teen Titans crossover in the near future. So that's inevitable. Everybody yeah. knew it was going to happen as soon as Super Sons came out. Right. It should be pretty cool. It should be a lot of fun, of course. I mean, it's great, all the kids playing together and having a I mean it's playing together but they're fighting crime and really doing some good stuff even when they're fighting they're playing of course with Green Arrow 2 you just wrapped up a major storyline you had some really big stuff going on that you had built up to for an entire year how did it feel to get to close the door on this story that you've been building since day one well the hard traveling heroes arc you know was not only a nod to that classic Dennis O'Neill Neil Adams uh, storyline, hard traveling hero, but it was also my attempt to bring Oliver Queen back into the central DC here. So he went through a cross country gauntlet and he hooked up with Flash and he hooked up with Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman and finally Green Lantern. The bromance was rekindled. Right? And he had an adversarial relationship with each of these characters, but merging out the end of it, earning earning their respect. And Justice League learned something from him. He learned something from the Justice League. And I'm excited for him now to go back to Seattle and clean up the mess that's waiting for him there. Hey there, we are at New York Comic Con. I'm with Ray Fox, who is writing the upcoming Ragman series that is coming out next week. Ray, how's it going? Uh, it's going great, man. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's been a really exciting New York Comic Con. There's been a lot of cool stuff. Obviously, you've got a lot to be excited about because Ragman is coming out just next week. Well, what can you tell us about Ragman? Uh, oh, man, I can tell you a lot about Ragman, but uh, no, I'm super <laughs> excited, too. I actually just saw my comps as I was about to fly to New York, and oh, uh, cool. the book is beautiful and dark and crazy, and I think people are going to lose their minds. That's what I'm excited about. I'm very curious to see what it brings because it's kind of showing us a different side of Gotham that we don't often get to see, and I think that's really cool. We, you know, we get to see that kind of weird, mystical, dirty, dark side. I mean, Gotham's already a dark city, but this is taking us to new depths and mystical realms, right? Yeah, well, I mean, readers who read uh, Batman Eternal uh, know that I was writing a little bit of the supernatural side of right. Gotham City for that, and um, I was super into it. I loved it. And then I did Gotham by Midnight, uh, and uh, basically, I always go to the DC offices and I tell them, anytime you want something dark and supernatural happening in Gotham City, I will totally do it. Um, and uh, I pitched them Ragman, they got excited about it, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna see um, the magic of the slums of Gotham City, something that we don't get to see a lot. A, a lot of the times we see the bad things that happen uh, to the sort of downtrodden of Gotham when the big villains attack, but we don't actually get to see their their day-to-day -day trials, and uh, you get to see that here in Ragman. You've, of course, worked a lot of really cool mystical stories in the world of Gotham. Does Metropolis or Central City or any of these other families kind of give you some mystical ideas? Uh, absolutely, yeah, but the, the thing is like each of the cities in DC's world are so rich that their supernatural sides would all be very different from each other, right? So it would be a wild ride to write like um, the, the supernatural in Central City or the yeah. supernatural in Metropolis, right? But I mean, Gotham City is where I naturally sort of drift towards because, you know, my dark, cold heart. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what I love. I, I'm not ashamed to say it. Well, I'm a sucker. I'm a big Flash guy, so I'm a sucker and hoping that you get around to Central City and maybe give us some cool Dr. Alchemy or something like that. We got Dr. Alchemy and we got the Wizard and Felix Faust. You never know what could happen in Central City, right? But uh, but honestly, Gotham City is where is is my core. 